And you know what? I think I'll just stay here. Probably a good idea. Can I get you anything? Drink of water. Okay. I will get you a cup. This. Under here? Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Oh, you're welcome. You tell Kim everybody liked her flowers? No. No, I, I didn't tell we, her. We have a lot of people talking about them. It was cool. really impressive. Yeah, we, uh, we came and got them, all 10 of the pots. And I don't oh. have any flowers this year. Mm. I can't get down to. Last year, I tried to get down. I was on my little cart, and I fell off the cart, and I had to crawl on my hands and knees to the door to be able to go up the steps and hold on to something. So, so I'll try it again this year. Well, after a successful surgery. Yeah. Yeah. I really enjoyed that yesterday. That was, that was wonderful. Disappointed. Some of the people didn't go. I figured it was about half of it should have been. Well. Hmm, okay. Let me make sure I'm okay with the red. You're up here. You're yeah. not. Oh, oh, come on. Come on. Aren't you going to process with me? I never do. <laughs> I come up that way. Yeah. You know, it would be uh, a little embarrassing if I tripped and fell up on the processor. Yeah, yeah, a little bit.
Good morning, friends. Good morning. And welcome on this beautiful Sunday morning to Willis Town United Methodist Church, where we are a family who welcomes, shares, and serves. Indeed, we are. It is good to see each and every one of your faces today. It is good that you're joining us on YouTube. Welcome, where you are just as much a part of this community as if you were in this very building. Well, we have a busy week ahead, friends. Um, we also had a busy day yesterday as we had our delightful um, potluck in which we had so many lovely faces joining us for good meal, good time, and thank you to everyone who came. And if you didn't come, you missed out. It was a great time. And you can see some of the festive uh, decorations that are currently up in the, uh, in the back room there. Enjoy those in the week ahead. Well, tomorrow upcoming, we have church council at 10 a.m. I know if you are an officer of the church, you'll be there, but if you're not used to coming to church council meetings, I'd invite you to be there. We're gonna discuss some really important things. So put that on your calendar tomorrow at 10 a.m. And then of course, we have our next blood drive this Tuesday from 12 to five. We got all of our ducks in a row. Thank you, Sarah Beam, for helping us to get us straight on all those things. And if you have any questions, please talk to Kurt and we're gonna be moving forward with that. And then of course our next listening session for the new Vision for Mission will be this upcoming Wednesday at 7 p.m. We're trying to accommodate different schedules, different times, and so if you'd like to be there but aren't necessarily comfortable driving at that time of the day, we will have carpools available to join us. So please put that on your calendars if you have not already. Busy time, but good time. Do we have any other announcements that we'd like to share with the community this morning? Seeing none, I invite you to rise and body your spirit for our call to worship. The sun has arisen. It is the Lord's day. Let us scatter the seed of gratitude. We come to God's house together. Let us scatter the seed of love. We come to do the hard work of the kingdom. Let us scatter the seed of love. We come to praise our creator, redeemer, and sustainer. Let us scatter the seed of praise. Let's sing. I will, this is the, oh, dup, 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 dup. I got a bunch of them. I'm getting a little mixed up here. <laughs> me folks this is the day this is the day that the lord has made that the lord has made we will rejoice we will rejoice and be glad in it and be glad in it. this is the day that the lord has made we will rejoice and be Oh, 
this little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. Our sort of reading comes from Psalm 85, page 806 in our hymnal. Let me hear what God will speak, for the Lord will speak peace to his people, to his faithful, to those who turn to him in their hearts. Steadfast love and faithfulness will meet. Righteousness and peace will kiss each other. Faithfulness will spring up from the ground, and righteousness will look down from the sky. The Lord will give what is good, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness will go before the Lord and make God's footsteps the way. Friends, now let us rest in the presence of God in the silence, for we know that God hears our prayers. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, great sower of the seed, we come to praise you today. We come to praise you in word and song and deed. We come to praise your goodness in sowing abundantly. And we also come to seize the calling to be sowers ourselves. For the needs are great. And sometimes we are the scatterers of the seed, and sometimes we are the receivers of the seed. But the seed is the same. Your grace, your love, your transformation that grows in many abundant ways. God, sometimes we find ourselves hardened to receiving the seed, and sometimes we find ourselves open. We pray that you would take those tiny cracks and open them wider that we may see your abundance and your goodness among us. Great God, may our hearts be transformed to see your newness, to experience your newness, and to be messengers of your newness. May we be comforted in our distresses, and may we be challenged when we think we have it all together, because we often do not. We often do not. And we pray for the humility to see that. For only in humility are we truly transformed. 
God, we pray for those who are struggling through that humility right now as they struggle with issues of mind, body, and spirit. We lift to you those in our community and those afar and those in the silence of our hearts, including Fred Bachman, Beth Southern, Bill and Carol Bowers, Lala Moreno, Phyllis Stadwald, and all those we lift to you silently in our minds and hearts. Hear our prayers, O oh God, that they may find your comfort, that they may find your strength, that they may find renewal in your spirit. We lift to our world today, O oh God, that struggles with so many things. We struggle with all those places that are currently on fire. Our friends and neighbors in this continent and our friends and neighbors in Hawaii especially. Great God, hear our prayers. May they find comfort and care in the body of Christ. We pray for all those places where your children are treated a little less than human. In places and situations we do not have names for. May they find your comfort and care. And, O oh God, we pray for those whose hearts are hardened, who think they all have it all together. May we find that there is always space for humility, to see our friends and neighbors in need, and to see ourselves in need from time to time. You know all these things, Holy One, and you guide us. May we be humbled, and may we be strengthened today as we pray the prayer our Lord Christ taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, it is a joy to gather every Sunday to grow our faith, to grow our relationships, to grow our ministry together. It is a joy to see each other's face. We also know that there are many struggles going on in our world. And I had a question brought before me about UMCOR and our friends in Hawaii. Know that our friends in UMCOR, the United Methodist Committee on Relief, are always on the ground in the most dire places. And so if you wish to give to UMCOR in this season of need, please go ahead and do so and mark uh, that on your checks and we will be sure to get that to the right place. But we also know that we have needs here and that we uplift our community of Willistown UMC and our local community through our tithes and offerings and gifts. And so as we reflect through music in this moment, let us reflect on how we can support one another and support the ministries of this church. Would the usher please come forward?
Friends, will you please join me in a word of prayer? Holy and great God, we thank you for your mighty bounty and the way that you spread your seed of goodness among us. We pray, O oh God, that you would bless these gifts that we share with you and with this community. May they abound, may they grow, may they multiply, that your name may be glorified in all we do. In Christ's holy name, amen. Our scripture reading this week continues with the story of the sower and the seed from Matthew 13. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the lake. Such great clouds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables saying, listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word but immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, Lee. Friends, will you please join me in a word of prayer? Holy God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be pleasing to you this day. In Christ's name, amen. It's funny how you think you have it all together, generally. You think you have it all together, and then something comes your way to remind you you don't have it all together. Last Monday night was one of those times. We were about to have a storm. I got excited for the thrill of the weather, you know, as all good Nebraska kids do. I knew it was going to be a doozy by the forecast, so I tried to get myself, I tried to get the house, I tried to get the dogs ready for anything that might happen that night. And boy, when it hit, it hit. It looked like we had a hurricane out there. Before I knew it, the power was winking, it was wavering, and then it was out. At about 6.30, the power stayed out. So I looked down at my cell phone, and I grumped to myself. I had a solid 25% power on it. So much for being ready, I thought. So I put that away with no way to recharge. So there we were in the darkness. But luckily, right before 6.30, a pizza had just come out of the oven. 
So as the t seconds ticked away, I found myself wanting to do things I would do every evening and then stop myself because I realized I couldn't really do that much. So for us, the power was out, oh, about five hours. And I found myself antsy every step of the way. I didn't realize how much I put my faith in and frankly take for granted the gifts of technology and electricity. It reinforced how much I don't realize my own comfort, even as, I, even as I think I'm trying to tackle a lot of different things. Another word for that is privilege. It's a word that gets tossed around a lot today, but its essential meaning is that we have so much in our lives we don't have to worry about while others really do. I was really challenged in those times. I needed to step back and reorient myself to what I lean upon, and whether I should when those revelations come my way. Because they teach us something about what we say we put our faith in and what we truly, truly put our faith in. So today, and of course for the next couple of weeks, we return to the same parable, the parable of the sower. This is among many of Jesus' parables, yet it is so rich in the many pieces. Each one has important meaning. And parables, as we mentioned last week, take what we know and break it apart to provide new understanding, new wisdom, where our beliefs had grown stale and rote. This week we shift to the second piece of the puzzle, and this piece is no different with the seed so last week was all about the sower. The seemingly careless, thoughtless sower spreads the seed where we think it least deserves it. The sower is God, creator, redeemer, and sustainer, because not, and also because God has no hands and feet in this world, we are also the sower. We are a connected people, and we sow seed wherever we go for good or for ill. But what about that seed? The seed goes everywhere, on rough ground, on thorny ground, on the good ground, and on the path. It is apparently wasted in all those places where it just won't grow. And yet in the tradition of the parables, that's the point. It goes where we think is foolish, but exactly where it needs to be. So what is it, that seed? Last week, we said the New Revised Standard Version calls it the word of the kingdom. What is the word of the kingdom? After all, there's a lot of ways we can interpret this. Of course, the word of God, which may be the words of scripture, but probably not, since the words of scripture were not complete in that day. But the word of God always seems to come back to that person of Jesus Christ. There's the word of grace, which embodies that ministry of Jesus Christ. And so we say Jesus saves. But what does that mean? Is it just to simply pray a prayer, get saved, and call it good? But then why are we here? Why do we keep learning? Why do we keep worshiping? Why do we keep praying? Why do we keep striving, searching, and being together if it's a one and done thing? It's not. So then what is the message of the word of the kingdom. Maybe it's it is that he is there to remind us, truly remind us what this was all about from the beginning. It comes lovingly and it also comes like a two by four when you know something like the power goes out. So I look at Jesus and every time I read a story of Jesus and how he connects with the people, there's always another layer to read. It gives me hesitance at any point to declare absolutely that Jesus is only this and Jesus is never this. Because those are the two poles we go to all the time. And when culture tries to come in and seize Jesus and his words for themselves and purposes that didn't even exist in that day. So the word for that kind of taking of Jesus for our own goals is called eisegesis. Eisegesis is your 10-cent word of the day. 
that is taking our thoughts, our intentions, our agendas, and imposing them on Jesus and the biblical text. This is where we take what our society says, what our presumptions are, what we want scripture to say, and we take those words and we use them for those goals. Often it is used to keep people down. It is used as a weapon to hurt. Or using those words of scripture to further one's own predecided stance. But this is not, as we see here, the word of the kingdom. That word of the kingdom we see instead by using those words of Jesus and the actions on their own terms. The rich young man comes to Jesus and asks, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He hears what Jesus says, that you must follow all of the commandments. And he says, I've done all of these from the very beginning. And so Jesus knows the picture is not yet complete. So he comes back with a challenge and holds him accountable for something more. Go and sell your possessions, he says, and give the proceeds to the poor. And the rich young man walks away humbled, knowing that what is asked of him, he doesn't want to do. When the Pharisees and the teachers of the law come to Jesus to trick him through a carefully crafted question, thinking they have him in a bind, Jesus has a way of getting out of the obstacles and turning their craft right back on them. But on the other hand, Jesus has another side. When someone comes to Jesus looking for help, for support, for healing, with humility, he treats those folks much differently. He doesn't judge them and he doesn't tell them what to do better. He loves and he cares for them. In other words, when approaching Jesus with presuppositions, he breaks them down. When trying to catch Jesus, he catches them. But when giving honesty, when giving humility, when asking humbly, he honors it. When shedding tears, Jesus wipes them. So what then is this word of the kingdom? In a simple word, it is transformation. Jesus doesn't bring comfort, and Jesus doesn't bring judgment. Jesus brings transformation. Those two poles are merely modes for the ultimate goal. To those who struggle, to those who have been beaten down, neglected, and forgotten, he brings that love, care, and support. But to those, <clears throat> excuse me, to those who mourn and weep, he brings presence. But for those who think they have it all together, he provides challenge. He provides pushback and he redirects toward humility. To those who will not budge from those arbitrary places that seem to only benefit my place, that is where he brings judgment. To all the places we are, to all the struggles and haughtiness we may have, Jesus Jesus Christ provides another thing to think about to address where our simple little formulas are in perfect balance, or so we think. Because as much as we may want to consider that we are there, there is always something else to consider. There's always another step toward the perfect love that will make us complete. And so the word of the kingdom, it's downright damning. And it's the only saving grace that we have. The word of the kingdom is the harbinger of God's kingdom. And this is not yet the kingdom. As Jesus said, in the midst of judgment, the kingdom will not be inherited by those who think they have it all together. The kingdom is inherited by none other than the children. The children who approach the kingdom with wonder with hopefulness, with fun and carefree joy in their hearts. The world has been dominated by the hardline voices that exhibit no grace, but grace instead is the key. 
This is what leads us to affirmation and accountability. There's no in and, in and out group in the kingdom. It's only the invitation to consistently be transformed. Because eternal life, right here and right now, is nothing short of that transformation. A new perspective, a new heart. Hope is transformation, forgiveness is transformation. Humility is transformation, and judgment is transformation when we take it to heart. And so if we're going to spread that seed, to share a word of the kingdom, you have to know the source. To share a word of grace and a word of challenge, you have to trust the source. I know that when I get in the pulpit every Sunday, there's a lot of trust that goes into the words I say the examples I use, and how I invite Jesus' words of comfort and challenge. And I hope you pray, I hope and pray that you know I'm trying to be honest and caring at every turn. And I do believe that changes the calculus of what is being said all along. Because we have an important calling. After all, we can only deliver the word of the kingdom when you actually know and truly trust someone. How can I deliver that word when I don't know you? Because if you don't know someone, you don't know how to speak to them. You can't hear what they have to say and why it matters because of where they came from. Because, and I can't stress this enough, why? Why should anyone give a care if they don't know and appreciate the source? That's the cornerstone of what the church should be. Why should they care about the church's ministry to say nothing about the people or the building or anything if we do not demonstrate clearly that we care about them first and foremost? This is what we saw in Jesus Christ, the word of the kingdom. As for how it lands and how it takes root, well, that's not our call. And it just happens to be the message for next week. So I dare say the word of the kingdom is worth everything that we can give it. It is grace, it is love, it is receiving what you do not have to find transformation. It is receiving what you need, whether you realize you need it or not. It is the power going out of your house and realizing you lean too much on what is not necessarily a given. After all, if you come to the throne of God with certainty that you have it all figured out, well, you will be humbled. I find myself that way more often than I'd like. But if you come to the throne of God with humility, knowing that there are many more things on earth and heaven than we can possibly ever know, well, then we will find a God who offers care, direction, and compassion to get a little bit closer to God's perfect love every day. But God only goes where God is invited. Lessons are only open to those who will hear. And if God comes to you with a heaping helping of humility in the scattered seed, well, what will we do with it? Thanks be to God. Amen. Yeah.
Friends, thank you for joining us in God's house today, whether you are here, whether you are online, it is a joy to be in worship together. And now as we end our time of worship here, go forth with this benediction. Go forth to find the transformation you need with humility, with comfort, with care. May the God who sows lovingly and willingly fill your hearts with the word of the kingdom. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the, community, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and always. Amen.
rejoice, rejoice, O Christian. Lift up your voice and sing. Eternal hallelujah, Jesus Christ the King. The help of all who seek Him, the help of all who find. None other is so loving, good and clean. He lives, He lives, Christ Jesus lives to say. He walks with me. Thank you, sister. <laughs>